I'm going to start this video by asking you to leave. I've got a playlist up here that's going to demonstrate all the different things that we did with the CMMG Endeavor in 6.5 Creedmoor. At the time, it was called the Mark III DTR2, not the Endeavor. Uh, so as you watch through these, you're gonna see that mentioned instead. But essentially, it is the same rifle. It's a big beast of an AR-10. It's set up really well for prone or other supported work and it just has really great ergonomics, had a good stock on the back, uh, good grip, good trigger, everything going on with that, and it had precision for miles, and well, I should say one mile. We were actually able to get this rifle on target effectively at one mile distant with 6.5 Creedmoor. That means that that bullet was subsonic for about 400 yards, and that itself is a great testament to the precision of CMMG's AR-10s. Uh, I was actually able to crank out a reliable .4 MOA out of this rifle with my hand loads, and if I use just cheap American Eagle 140 grain ammo, then I was shooting about uh, three quarter MOA. That is not too shabby at all. Great rifle. And we were able to hit clay pigeons anywhere from 75 yards out to 400 yards. We shot moving targets at 600 yards. We shot roughly a hand size group at 1000 yards. And yeah, then we had the, uh, the mile test where we got it out a couple times and were able to uh, smack some steel out at extreme distances. At the CMMG Media Day, I was able to shoot several examples of the new Endeavor, so I can talk you through some of the changes that I see between this new one and the old one, and how I think it's going to be really an upgrade for a lot of you guys. I think you're gonna find it a bit more accessible than the one in the past. But first thing that I'd like to point out is you can see that the furniture is totally different. It looks different. So you have a new kind of slim handguard. This is going to reduce weight. It's going to give you lots of M-lock all over the place. And you can see that across the top that they've shaved away some of the Picatinny that you don't use at the top in order to save weight. And they have M-lock up there instead. So you still have Picatinny kind of toward the back. So if you need to mount some kind of optic accessories, you still can. And then out at the front, this is gonna be where your side is. Or maybe if you have a weird bipod attachment, you can stick it out on that end. But yeah, overall, it's just going to be kind of a nice slim setup. It's going to be uh, I think just really comfortable for a lot of you guys that if you do want to take that offhand shot you can really get a thumb over bore really easily. You can pick how you want to fire this and it's going to be set up for you really well. And with all that M lock it means you can get whatever attachments you need like lights, lasers, uh, whatever you're going to set up for your hunt. Matching that styling as we move backward, you have the action itself, uh, which has, yeah, you can see that it doesn't look like your average AR-10. It just looks a little bit cooler. Uh, this is their own new design to really set itself apart from the rest of the industry, and it's gonna function just the same as anything else. One thing that I would like to point out as we're looking at this action, though, is that the, uh, the door on the side apparently is now polymer instead of metal. I don't think that's gonna make any difference. It's not like it's some kind of element that heats up or whatever, and it should be just fine. I just wanted to point that out. One last element that you'll see on the upper receiver is the charging latch, which is going to retain that large, wide, kind of tactical latch up here. This is just much easier to grab, especially if you're running a scope. And most of you guys that buy these endeavors, I know you're gonna be putting a scope on top. In fact, I think it's gonna be pretty rare that some of you guys will be running just irons. Uh, but it's just gonna be really easy to grab from either side. And yeah, it gets out of the way of the scope. And uh, yeah, this is something that they've had on some of their higher end models for a while. And it looks like it's becoming much more standardized on a bunch of uh, the Resolutes and the Endeavors. And I'm really happy to see that. Now, as we move down to the lower receiver, there are some changes to see. Uh, first off, the grip that was on the old one was a mag pull. It's gonna be one of the kind of vertical-ish grip ones. So it doesn't lay back quite as far as like an A2 grip. Um, and this is something that is just great for prone work. I've used this grip offhand prone, you know, supported on a bench, all kinds of different things. And it's a really great angle that works for everything. If you want something more specific, of course you can swap it out, but I think it's just a really good uh, starter grip. And this one is now the CMMG zeroed kind of version of that. It feels exactly the same as the Magpul. It's just now CMMG's own kind of branded version of it. It does still have the compartment at the bottom if you want to put in batteries or, you know, little tools or cleaning cloths or whatever. So yeah, it is essentially the Magpul grip. Just above that, we have a polymer trigger guard. So much like the door that we had up there, it's gonna be polymer on the bottom as well. It's gonna save you 
a minuscule amount of weight and it's just fine. It has some curve to it. So if you have gloves, you're going to have a little bit of room. The trigger is something that I want to mention in a big way uh, to make sure that you budget for a new trigger if you pick up one of the CMMGs, unless you really like a mil-spec trigger. If you want you know, the safety and reliability that comes from a mil-spec trigger, okay, fine, keep it. But I think a bunch of you guys may want to budget an extra 100, 120 bucks or whatever uh, for a different trigger to drop in. I think that CMMG has realized that people just go swap the triggers anyway, so they'd prefer to save a few bucks, go with a cheap one, and then people will go swap it out later. But yeah, it is a mil-spec trigger. There's a lot of creep. It just is not great for precision work. And so I'm gonna recommend that if you pick up one of these endeavors that you buy yourself uh, like a Rise Armament RA240. Uh, the 140 SST is really good. Um, pretty soon I'm gonna be testing a Trigger Tech Diamond uh, for AR-10, and they have one for AR-15 as well. Another one that I've tested a whole lot is going to be either the Geisley, or in my opinion, I like the Rock River one better. We have the, uh, the two-stage triggers. If you don't mind that bit of slack that you have to take up before you get to the shelf, and then pull the trigger, it's like, you know, a couple ounces, you just pull on this thing, it moves a little bit, hits a shelf, and then you fire. Uh, those are really good as well, whatever you guys feel like. Uh, but yeah, all of those are ones that I would heartily recommend if you wanna swap those in. Moving forward from the trigger, there's a really nice Ambi mag catch, so you can hit it from either side. And then up above the trigger, you're going to have their new ambidextrous 60 degree throw safety. This is something that's gonna take a little bit of training for me to get used to. I'm so used to these 90 degree ones. You know, there's safe, there's fire. And so it feels weird to me to only be flipping it that little amount. And I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm not safe. I need to somehow get the, you know, it just feels a little strange to me. But with time, I'll be able to get it. And it's actually gonna be quicker out in the field. So I think that's a really cool upgrade. I mentioned that it's ambidextrous, so that's gonna be great for you lefties. You're gonna be able to switch over. As we move back, the stock has changed. So this is still, you know, a typical buffer system. And instead of having the Magpul PRS Gen 2 stock back there, they've gone with uh, this very attractive and simple um, stock at, toward the back. It's just all polymer and it has a really good butt pad to it. So this isn't going to have the adjustable parts. You're not going to be able to extend your length of pull or get, you know, a different cheek size. Um, but it just seems to be a really good setup overall. It feels a lot like an A2 sort of stock with a better cushion at the back. And I think a lot of this is to help with the weight issue. They've done some things on this rifle to help keep it below what it used to be. I think the old um, uh, Mark III DTR2 that I was talking about, a 6.5 Creedmoor, I think that was like a 12 point something pound rifle. Uh, that is quite a heavy beast, which is gonna be great for prone and it's gonna be really good for, yeah, that supported type of shooting. In our little testing where we were just shooting Winchester factory ammo, uh, hitting steel at 300 yards was no problem at all. It, was, it se seems to be still a very precise weapon. The Cerakote that you see here on this Banshee from CMMG, and here on the, uh, uh, the Resolute, this still has some shine to it. And you can probably see as I move this around that it's, it's pretty matte, but it still has some shine to it. It's kind of like a, a leaf shine. That's how it comes across. So yeah, it's gonna blend into the woods pretty well. But the new models, they have changed how they do their Cerakote. And I got to chat with the guy that's kind of in charge of that area at the factory. And um, yeah, they've changed some things up and it is much more matte than it used to be. It has just kind of a little bit of a, almost like a speckled look to it. Uh, it is extremely matte, extremely flat, and it's gonna do a better job of preventing shine. So if you're interested in, you know, really hiding yourself from animals, or if you're looking at defensive situations where you just don't wanna be noticed, I think the new models are gonna do a better job. Uh, out at the front of the barrel as well, you have the new muzzle brake. So we talked about that in a previous video. It's going to take some of the elements from the Ultradyne with its kind of backward raked chambers. Instead of being a single chamber design, like you see here, it's gonna have two chambers and it's gonna have two big vents blowing out the top to help keep muzzle climb down. And in our testing and all the different uh, rifles and pistols that they had at the CMMG uh, range day, their media day, 
um, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty obviously more effective than their older model. The old one was great, but the new one is even more effective. But just remember that you're going to need more hearing protection, uh, like I mentioned, and that's going to be your buddies as well, anybody that's next to you on the line. It's just really, really loud. One thing that I'd like to point out, a pretty big difference between the, uh, the older Mark III DTR2 and now this uh, Endeavor line is that they've, they still have the stainless barrels, but they do salt bath nitride these, so you're gonna get longer service life out of them. That's what I should expect. It's going to resist any kind of stains or rust. It's just gonna be more of an outdoor capable weapon. You're gonna be able to take it out and it's gonna to continue to function for just years and years and years to come. And it should uh, be able to handle more ammunition than before. It's gonna be able to handle more rounds down the pipe. Uh, the salt bath nitriding does a really good job of preventing that bore erosion. And so you should have plenty of accuracy for a very long time. All of this adds up to a rifle that really just feels new. It re feels refreshed in a big way. Yeah, the mechanicals are, you know, kind of the same. It's still the AR-10 setup. They haven't done anything massive as far as that goes. They still have good gas timing and all the things that they had before, but they've just done some things to make it a bit more accessible, more usable out in the field. And I think you guys will get just years of good service out of these rifles. Now, next up, we're gonna move on to the Resolute. Thanks to you guys for watching. Thank you to CMMG for letting me uh, play with some of their new stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you to Patrons of Destructive Arts for making these videos possible. So yeah, on to the Resolute. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.